um, I think I was maybe about three or four years old before I went to school, before I could uh, uh, read and write, and I start, you know, just draw. And I would pick up a pencil and paper and draw. And that's the thing, I, I think I was born with that uh, ability to draw. That's why I, I always want to be an artist. That's what my dream at, when I was young. In school, the educational system is like they don't really uh, teach art or encourage art that much. So it's very difficult, you know, for anyone, like if, if they are uh, artistic or creative, to really pursue the dream to be an artist in Hong Kong. So then, 2006, and then I found you know, um, here for time, and then industrial building, so I could use it like like a studio, you know. I want to provide space for other artists to share. So they only just share the Model 3. Because actually the Saturday group is not making money at all. On the weekdays, I still have to teach in painting to keep the income. What my approach is, is I get them to start with colour first. So it doesn't matter when I teach them how to draw something, it's already part of the sketching already before they put colours in. But they, you've got to really introduce colour in a very early age because they, they won't get bored. Well, I, I just signed up, but like, I, I couldn't make it, so I, I'm actually here for the, for the second session. Hello? Yeah. We'll have the live drawing to help them to learn like, sketching. Like, live drawing is, uh, is very important because like, this is a basic, like learn uh, how to draw and then learn the proportion and light and dark, all this stuff. So I can still introduce them just directly to the colours, just oil painting, that's fine. So I will adjust, depends, you know, what they want, what they need. It was like end of May. Um, after my uh, like exhibition in the uh, Hong Kong Contemporary Art Fair, I, I was really blind. So what happened is, I always thought I only got uh, migraine. I didn't know I got glaucoma. Glaucoma is slowly like losing my eyesight. Actually, if some people like born, born with that problem, and then people don't realize, I got the laser treatment. It was really painful, but it was, uh, you know, wow, I have to go through that. Just imagine if I'm an artist, a visual artist, and then I lost my eyesight you know, and then couldn't paint anymore. That was really scary. Like, if I didn't, uh, you know, see the right doctor, I nearly got blind at that point. I like to use my paintings to communicate with the people in Hong Kong and then communicate with my audience. And then I use my painting to like give out messages. So like all like hidden meanings in, in, in my paintings, you know. So like we reflect, you know, like the Hong Kong issues, you know, in Hong Kong. Like for example, like I have uh, one painting called One Country, Two Systems. Actually, it's like a reflection of Hong Kong's you know, uh, situation, the rich and poor, the big gap in the rich and poor, you know. And like one with the window for 1st of July, the March for Democracy. I use that window to uh, make you feel that you can be the bystander looking out the window, looking down, or you can be uh, one of them marching on the street. Some people are very sensitive. One painting, that one is called the Liberation. When I first exhibited in uh, City Hall, it caused a controversial. One of those old men, they're Patrick Ortic, got my painting really angry and say, how can you do that? Humility with China, because I think I'm making fun of China. Um, we usually how many students in one class? Uh, you know, one. Well, it's quite lucky.
exactly like um, before I, uh, the opening, I saw this uh, sculpture. Uh, so, 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 so,